Juan Dominguez from One Step Prep. Today we're going to be reviewing the Boeing 737 emergency exit light. What power sources actually do the emergency exit light receive? All right, so if you look over here at the electrical diagram before I show you actually the switch, all right, the emergency exit light normally receives power, remember, from DC bus 1. DC bus 1 will be the normal power source for the emergency exit light. Now, if you look here, DC bus 1 normally receives power from TR1. So, what, what that means is, normally if you lose TR1, if you lose TR1, that is going to be the normal power source for DC bus 1, what's going to happen is, as long as TR3 disconnect relay is closed, now TR2 or TR3, through a dial is going to be powering DC bus 1. So you're not going to lose at this time, you're not going to be losing the emergency exit lights yet. They're not going to be coming on. Remember normally the emergency exit lights, they are in the arm position in flight. It's a three position switch, off, arm or on. So normally for flight, we're going to have it in the arm position. Let me show you the switch over here for a minute. Okay, so let's let's come here to the to the panel. And if you look over here, you can see this is the emergency exit light. It's a three position switch, off, arm and on. Normally for flight, it's gonna be in the arm position. So as long as you have that switch in the arm position, and if you lose DC bus one, what's gonna happen? The emergency exit light, they all gonna come on. All right, so everybody's gonna start screaming, including the flight attendants. So this is something to keep in mind. What happened here now? Let's get a little bit deeper into the system. So, like I was telling you before, DC bus 1 normally receives power from TR1. If you lose TR1, all right, on the Classic, on the Boeing 737 Classic, you don't have any indication to know when do you lose TR1, unless if you put the DC selector on, in TR1. So you're gonna be able to check the voltage. That's why on the NG, now they came out with the amber light that is called TR unit. Why? Because it's easier now for the flight crew to figure it out or to know when do we lose TR1, two or three. So going back to the classic, remember on the classic, we don't have any master cushion light or any annunciator light that is gonna let us know when do we lose TR1. Actually, the only way we can do it is if we monitor actually the DC, the DC selector that is positioned, that is gonna be positioned normally in TR1. So if you lose TR1 in the classic, on the 737 classic, all right? So what's gonna happen is, now DC bus one is gonna be powered by TR2 or TR3 through a dial. So at this time, you're not gonna lose anything yet. But what happened? Remember, this is something that you guys should know. The TR3 disconnect relay, Remember that this relay, there is two ways that you can, that this relay can open. One is gonna be automatically, and one is gonna be manually. This TR3 disconnect relay normally opens automatically when you intercept the glide slope, right? On an ILS approach using the autopilots or the flight directors are on, all right? As long as you have the bus transfer switch, if you look over here, this switch over here, the bus transfer switch in the auto position, all right? We already reviewed this switch before, and I think you guys already know a little bit about this switch. So as long as you have that bus transfer switch in the auto position, as soon as you intercept the glide slope on an ILS approach with the flight directors on or autopilot on, what's gonna happen? The TR3 disconnect relay is gonna open up, so now, why is going to open? So we can isolate the navigation receivers. In case if you lose one, the captain's or the first officer's side, it doesn't affect either or size. Okay, that's why it opens automatically when you intercept the glide slope. Or another way to open this TR3 disconnect relay is going to be manually. Okay, so how are we going to do it manually? By putting the bus transfer switch in the off position. When you put, when you open that guard and you move the switch from auto to off, automatically you opening manually the TR3 disconnect relay. All right. 
So now that we know a little bit about the power source for the emergency exit lights, how everything is gonna come together, or what I'm trying to tell you here now. Okay, let's assume that you are flying. Let's assume that you are flying, and you lost TR1 on the classic aircraft, all right? If you are flying and you lose TR1, let's assume you are flying at 35,000 feet, you lost TR1. Remember, we don't have a master caution light or an annunciator light. So you're not gonna know. The only way is, if by any chance you look up and you look your DC selector that you have it selected on TR1, or if you have it in TR3, then you're gonna have to start going to TR2, TR1, and checking the proper voltage for the TRs that is gonna be 28 volt DC. So, it will be very hard, right? Not too often we do those type of check, all right? So normally we just wait for the master caution light or the annunciator light to come on, all right? So if you lose TR1 and you're flying at 35,000 feet, DC bus one is gonna be powered now by TR2 or TR3 through a dial, as long as the TR3 disconnect relay is closed. But guess what? What's gonna happen when you start your descent Right? When you start uh, going down, when you start getting ready for it to configure, now you're shooting the approach. What's going to happen? What do you think is going to happen when you intercept the glide slope on an ILS with those flight directors or autopilot on? Automatically, the TR3 disconnect relay is going to open. And now that the, the relay opens, now you're going to lose DC bus 1. And when you lose DC bus 1, right? What's gonna to happen to the emergency exit lights? Now they're all gonna come on because they are in the arm position. And remember the emergency exit light normally receive power from this bus over here, DC bus one. So we have to be careful, all right? So by any chance, normally when you're shooting your ILS, if you intersect the glide slope, right? And all the emergency exit light come on. Now you should know, the first thing you should know is, or the first thing you should do is you can tell your co-pilot or the captain, the only thing they have to do is look up and look at tier one. And I guarantee you that you lost tier one. That's why you lost DC bus one. And that's why the emergency exit light came on. All right. This is one way. Now we have another way that we can discuss this emergency exit light. What happened when you lose DC bus one? Let's assume that you're working on the bus transfer switch. Let's assume that you're working on the bus transfer switch and now you want to move that switch to the up position. When do you actually do this? Well, a nice example to do this is going to be normally when you do like an electrical smoke or fire, right? When you isolate in the buses. One of the first things when you isolate in buses, the QRH is going to tell you to do is, hey, in order to isolate the left bus from the right bus right entire you need to open the bus transfer switch to the off position not right now you know where i'm coming from so let's assume again that you lost tr1 if by any chance you already know that you lost tr1 because you were one of the guys that normally check right and you you, you have it on tr1 and you see that the voltage is in zero all right and now you know that tr1 is lost so now automatically you should know that DC bus one is powered by TR two or three as long as the TR three disconnect relay is closed. So before you open the bus transfer switch to the up position, remember, remember again, the TR three disconnect relay, there is two ways that you can open that relay. One is automatically, one is gonna be manually. Remember the manual is gonna be when you put the bus transfer switch to the off position. So before you put the bus transfer switch to the up position and you know that you already lost tier one, the first thing you should do is put the emergency exit light switch to the off position. Because as soon as you put the bus transfer switch to off, automatically, manually, manually you're gonna open the tier three disconnect relay, losing power to DC bus one and all the emergency exit light is gonna come on. This is something that you guys have to keep in mind when you actually uh, doing isolating power sources, when you're doing troubleshooting, or when you're following the QRH procedures. Make sure you always integrate systems, make sure what happens every time you move a switch, because remember when you move one switch, sometimes that can be affecting maybe three or four lights. They are powered by the same bus, all right?
So I hope you like this video about the Emergency XLI and the power source that is gonna be this bus one and the other system that is integrated that is gonna be the bus transfer switch. What happened when you move that switch to the off position or what happened when you have the bus transfer switch in the auto in the auto position? We already have some videos about this bus transfer switch on the previous vi videos that we already done before. But if you need any help, Hey, if you need any to review any system, just give us a call. One Step Prep, we're always here. Joe and I, we're always here to help as much as we can. Visit our website. We have a lot of new training videos, excellent video for ground school, for pilots, mechanics, flight attendants, and I hope you enjoy. Love you guys. God bless you.